Coming up, new violence underground. There's been a shooting on the subway and now a search for the gunman's underway. How much longer those showers will stick around and how much colder it's going to be by morning. Plus, New York Live's meeting up with Brooklyn's very own plant queen to find out how this botanical expert became an Instagram favorite. Hey, what's up? This is News for Now for April 26. I'm Kay Ingram. Now, first up, police are trying to track down the gunman who killed a man at a Queen subway station right in the middle of the Monday evening rush. Now, police say 24-year-old Marcus Bethia of Brooklyn died at Jamaica Hospital after being shot inside the Parsons Boulevard Archer Avenue subway station. Police tell us he got into an argument with another man when the suspect pulled out a gun, shot Marcus, and then took off. It's an unfortunate reminder of the violence that happened just two weeks ago in our subway system. Now, this here is new video showing the Sunset Park subway mass shooting suspect casually boarding an MTA bus a whole 40 minutes after the shooting that injured more than a dozen people. In this case, no one died. So what's the latest? Well, we've learned that the MTA inspector general is launching a formal investigation into why the cameras in the Sunset Park station weren't working the morning of the shooting. Here's what subway riders had to say about the whole thing and how they're feeling now. If there's more shootings, then I'll start taking the bus. I'll even walk. I'll walk. It's a 45 minute walk, but I'll do it. It's a really safe area, and I'm like surprised that like somebody got shot over here, but it's still okay. The MTA chairman says they need to increase law enforcement's visibility and that fare evasion is also a major concern, costing millions of dollars. But back to those shootings. They've gone down on the heels of a new report detailing the city's rising subway crime rates. Get this, as of last week, there have been 664 transit crimes reported in 2022. And y'all, we're not even halfway through the year. Mind you, that's compared to 398 at this same time last year, an increase of 67%. Now next, get a load of this. You're watching two officers in New Jersey kicking their way into a burning home to search for a 79-year-old man. The South Brunswick officers searched the smoke-filled mobile home on Birch Street Monday after a neighbor said he saw the man's truck parked outside. Now luckily, the man wasn't inside and the officers weren't hurt. As for the home, that's totally destroyed. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Pretty nasty day. It's still a lot of cloud cover and occasional showers still left to go before the front comes on through. So the next few hours into the evening can see some spotty showers, nothing terribly heavy, and all the thunder should stay way to the south. Once we get past midnight, we start to see the skies clear a bit. We're also going to see those winds shifting from the southeast that we see during the evening hours to the west northwest and picking up. So it's going to be breezy and with the drier air, cooler temperatures, yeah, we've got that spring chill back down into the 40s overnight 48 for the city north and west. A few spots could dip into the upper 30s and lower 40s and we stay in the mid 40s from Long Island and down the shore, but high temperatures about 10 degrees below average. Now, if spring is all about starting fresh and spreading good vibes, then no one, and I mean no one, does it better than the plant queen. New York Live caught up with Brooklyn's very own social media sensation to learn more. If plants and positivity are your thing, then you are in for a treat because today we are catching up with the one and only plant queen for anybody who has not heard of the plant queen. I would describe myself as a black queer non-binary queen who's obsessed with the botanical theme. And also I should say congratulations on your book. Thank you. You bro girl. It's a little bit of storytelling. I talk about the legacy of my family. My grandmother really started me on this journey of gardening. Also in your book, we will find some of your favorite local places to shop for yes. all of our plant needs. And you're going to take me to some of them today. Of course. So where are we starting? We are going to start at one of my favorite Brooklyn gym, Press Hardware. Let's go. Let's get into it. So, you know, I bought my first plant in the summer of 2016, a Marble Queen Poso. She was just a few leaves. She's over nine feet long now. 
And so that summer, um, I made a promise to myself that I would go on dates with myself and explore the local green scenes and plant shops in the area. Yeah. So I actually shot the cover of my book in this plant shop because it was one of the plant shops that was near and dear to my heart. The owners are great, the folks that work here are great. Um, they've really helped me um, throughout this entire plant parent journey. So it was only right that um, I included them in the book as well. So we are getting ready to enter the lushness that is Greenery Unlimited. This plant shop is one of my faves because of the biophilic design that they've incorporated into the plant shop. And that's really utilizing greenery, lushness, and nature and incorporating it into the architecture of the store. Christopher, I know people are gonna watch this and they're gonna wanna keep up with you, get your plant tips, maybe even come to your book tour. Where should we send them? You can find me on Instagram. That's at Plant Queen, K-W-E-E-N, honey. And finally, if you walk dogs, repeat after me. Scoop the poop. After a rise in complaints, New York City is stepping up enforcement on owners who aren't cleaning up after their dogs. News for Gus Rosendale is here with more on the frustrations and fines you could face. I've been walking dogs for going on 10 years now. A decade on the job, and professional dog walker Anthony Ellison says he's never seen city sidewalks looking so messy. I've seen people not pick, after their, pick up after their dogs. I've seen people leave their bags behind on the street. I think they need to enforce the laws. Scoop the poop! Scoop the poop! A spike in complaints about owners not cleaning up after their dogs has a city council member representing Hell's Kitchen, Chelsea, and the West Village taking action. A lot of people got dogs during the pandemic. They adopted dogs, bought dogs, fostered dogs. So we have a lot of new dog owners, and that's great, but they've got to know you've got to pick up after your dog. So you'll now see a new public information campaign on social media and NYC link kiosks. The message, short if not so sweet, there is no poop fairy. So many times that I want to say, hey, you forgot to, to pick that up, but, you know, that could get me killed. The city's curvy dog law has been around for a while, for more than 40 years. It was passed in 1978. The fine, then and now, $250. And while owners typically follow the posted rules at this Hell's Kitchen dog run, violators on the sidewalk better watch out. The sanitation department is starting a ticket blitz on people who don't pick up what their pups drop off. I go out behind my building and it's full of uh, dog bombs and I just pick up because I can't take it and I see the little kids stepping in it. But now hopefully a step in the right direction instead of a step into a mess. In Hell's Kitchen, Gus Rosendale, News 4 New York. All right, friends, thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.